my fellow viewers, today I bring to you, finally, my tail tutorial. Now being that it gets really warm in here and I really need to be able to work in a comfortable space. And also this is a tutorial and not really just a uh, talkative video that's meant to be more uncut. Um, I'm just going to overdub the entire thing for you so that we both get better quality in speaking and also I can work comfortably. So here is an example of the type of tail I'll be making for you guys. Um, if you do want to learn about how I make the garters and where I get extra accessories and everything, if you are willing to make this yourself, I am more than happy to show you how I make the garters as well. They're really fun. I always try to add something with resin in it and you know, I'm into spikes too, so there's that as well. So, let's get into the video, shall we? Um, we're gonna first show you the process of what you need and then we'll go from there. Thank you guys so much. I really hope you enjoy this video. It's a pleasure to share what I do for craft making and my business as well. See you later, guys. Okay guys, so this is my tail and it always has accessories for my own taste. Um, I usually add a rotation clip and additional clips and jump rings just to kind of have ease whenever you need to remove anything from your tail. It's always good to have some kind of variation with it. So yeah, there's that. Okay guys, so these are the additional things you might need to use for your tail. Like I said, jump rings work the best, but right now for today as an example, because I'm out of the bigger ones, we'll be using the thicker ring for my example on how to braid and put together your tail, tail cord. But ideally, these jump rings, uh, sorry about the focus, but these jump rings, split rings as you call them, are good. And always get like a $4 brush from Walmart for your pets. I, on a personal level, don't think these should be used on your pets, but whatever. Um, we're gonna use our own yarn today. And I usually get a Red Heart brand, so some other brands I've worked with as well. But I feel like this one also is very good to start with if you're a beginner. And yeah, there's that. And then, you know, it doesn't really matter to myself at least what size the yarn you use. It's just all about the brush technique. And this is the yarn and the type of strands that I'll be using for braiding as well. This is very useful and I'll show you some tips and tricks. And this is my mixed up pile that I organized later, but that's what I use for this particular uh, tail I'm working on today. Alright guys, so as you can see, this is my 30 inch tail I'm working on and I've got the top started of it. I'm still working on it to this day, but uh, at the end there's going to be a little bit over 30 inches at the end and I'll explain why in a little bit. And one of my tools I totally forgot to tell you guys, I'll tell you guys right now, is you need a 4.5 crochet needle. And I will show you in a moment why you would need a 4.5 crochet needle. But here is the core, you can see that it's braided, I did not cut off the ends just yet. And just showing you right now just how it kind of looks and how thick I've made this to be. And then on the inside it looks right here where you tie them, there you go, there's a close up. And that's where you'll be tying all of your strands. And I'm here now to uh, explain that in a moment. All right guys, so here we are. We're gonna get into the rings. And you will need any type of thick stranded yarn and your two rings. Now, like I said before, the jump ring and split ring are ideal because you can put lobster claws in it. You can put other additional hooks with it but this one is just much too small for a normal size tail. If you want to, you can totally use it for a keychain ring. I think that'd be great, like little little keychain tails. And then this one today, we're gonna be using specifically just to show you how to build the core. I personally will not be making a tail with this core, but I will show you the bare bone of the tail while using this ring. So yeah, 
we're gonna get into it in a moment right now we're gonna put that off to the side and now I'm gonna show you how to make your cooler all right guys so now I'm here to show you how to start your tail um, before you even bring out the ring I want you to get whatever yarn it doesn't matter what color I don't find any harm in any color and it's not hard to cover it up if you are um, <sighs> I can't speak if you are uh, stranding it right. So what I do is I lay it out on the bed. Uh, I kind of just eyeball the measurements not all the time that I measure it out. And you want to start your first one with a stretched out yarn piece and have your little end on the side facing you. And make sure you have that bite. I usually just call it a bite. And you just start looping it. And you continue that for a little bit, making sure that they are as even as can be with each other and not too big. Sometimes people use from thumb to elbow, but that also causes way too short of a tail sometimes. So now we're going to continue looping. This is for an average size 17 to 20 inch tail. It usually comes out as that. So we've been looping, keeping even as much as we can, and here's me showing an example of the braid I did. Once again, it's a thicker braid, a lot more yarn. This, the amount of yarn I have there is about an average tail, which it would be this size. This size would be the average of what the amount of yarn I have on the bed now, and that is the core. So you can see it's a really, really bright pink. Here's a close up. And it's covered completely by all the yarn that we have used atop of it. Alright, here we are nearing the end of our looping. Now what you're going to want to do is to make sure you don't lose this bite. You can't lose this bite. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the bite right here. We're gonna keep a hold of it and we're gonna kind of like flush out all of the yarn strands that we have and keeping both of the opened ends already on that side just makes it a lot easier and neater see right there make sure those are on that side and not on the bite end and then we just snip that all off So now that you have both your strands evened out as possible, it doesn't have to be perfect, trust me, don't even try to make it perfect, it doesn't always come out that way, but uh, you take your bite right there, and then you take your ring, and then you just pull it on through, try to keep it even, even if you mess up a little, if it's not like a perfect pull through, it's okay, you can always fix it before you tie it off. Now, my suggestion is to never, ever make a knot tie. What you need to do is just start the braid. And you can use a handle of some sort, a hook, uh, your toe if you need to. But, um, yeah, just hook it on something and then start braiding. Here I am, just trying to straighten out some of the strands. Like, they're, like I said, they're not all perfect. But they are there. And there you have it. There's a part of your core that you need to do. Now you've got it braided. Congrats. You're doing a great job. Here's some quick tips though I want to talk about. Now, once you're done with it braided, do not trim the ends of your tail. Leave those little frilly frills, okay? And I'll tell you why. One of the reasons is, if you want to adjust it, you can adjust it that way. And another reason that you would only focus on the end and just leaving it be is because if you cut and try to adjust or make shorter at the top, you are going to mess up your tail. If you're not at the top of your tail, you're going to not be able to weave it through and hide that yarn. So it's always great to have that bottom tail just left alone and hanging around as always until the very, very end to where you can trim and secure it or trim it shorter and make the tail shorter. So always 
always always make the yarn longer and the tail longer than you expect so then you can do trimming and sizing later guys here we are for the next step now i'm not going to use this yarn but this is what i would usually use for my tails today though we are going to be using this as my example yarn because it's a scrap yarn at this point i don't really need it that much so we are going to work with this butte so you're going to take this end all right much like making your tail core you know the beginning of it you take that and you hold it by your two fingers and you wrap it from your fingers to your elbow a few times oops wow wow scales and just do that a couple of times at first uh yeah mm -hmm. yeah i look so happy to do this right now so happy wow it, can you leave your hair alone ma'am Jeez. okay so after that um you're going to kind of slip that yarn between your thumb and your palm and continue on with the wrapping and it will kill your arms because you have to do this a million times but once you're done and you got a much thicker version of what I have here you trim it at the top or you could do it at the bottom but I prefer the top because you can hold it with the bite and it won't really matter too much but you take the bite you do the whole you know stretchy stretchy making sure it's all kind of even as much as possible all right and this is a great length to start out as because when you're um when you're brushing your tail it will take off an inch or two of the yarn strand that you make so there you go so we cut the first end and then we grab that end that is already cut yep we're not done yet so we just stretch it out like that as such and then here it is oh boy the reveal oh who could have guessed you cut the other end so that right there is a great length to start off with your fur because you will lose inches and you will have fluff in the middle so there you go and just kind of separate it a little bit after that here we are with our 4.5 millimeter uh, crochet needle and we've got my already worked on tail what I usually do is I search out, after getting a few rows done, any gaps that need to be filled. Now this is a big thing with your tail. You need to be able to fill all the gaps in or else it's not going to come out as thick as you'd like it. If you purposely want it to be uh, very thin, like a cat tail almost, I do suggest making thinner chunks of yarn sewn in. So here is a example of a gap that I found on my most recent row. We're going to inspect on where we can insert the crochet needle through the looping of the braid. I'm separating it now, poking it through, just like that. Trying to get it in detail as much as possible to help every everyone out. So after that, you take uh, about, mm, let's say two to four, sometimes even six, I can get through uh, a pull through with my yarn. And you kind of loop it around your crochet needle hook, just like that. Yep, I'm gonna slow it down for you to show how I pull it through as well. So here we go, we're going to adjust. So then we can pull that chunk through right there. Okay, so now that it's pulled through, what helps me best keep track of my yard, yarn strands is to pull it back a little bit so it's about mm, an inch to quarter inch uh, long. So I know where I'm at and I don't lose that chunk. Sometimes other strands will be pulled through from other tie-offs. It's just a simple um, re-hooking and pulling that out from the other direction. So now we're going in for another chunk. And again, we're going to repeat the process. I do not count the amount of strands. I just go by thickness when I um, check the first strand before the tie off. And then right before my tie off, I do put them together to see if that's the amount I want for this particular spot. Your main spots, you want a lot more. Your inner weaving spots when there's a, uh, a bald spot, as you say. 
in your tail, you want a slightly thinner version of that to help keep the fluff going and to not overstrain your yarn strands because there could be breakage. I've never had breakage yet, but I have felt the tension within the yarn that might cause some issues. So here we are, we're gonna go in and do another strand real quick here. Okay guys, so when you find your thickness that you enjoy, you think is right for your tail and any spot that you need to work on, I need you to pull it through. And I'm going to pull it through halfway, you know, kind of like finding your bite again within your strands. So once you're ready and you're evened out, you just simply pull, pull a knot into it. Some people like to knot it first before they put it on the tail and then brush it. I find it a lot easier and more uh, compatible with your tail and how it functions and how it looks at the end if you weave it first before you do the brushing. So attach it to the tail first before you go and do your brushing. And there you have it. Now you have your brush in hand and this is where it gets a little tricky because you really need to keep an eye out on how much you brush and how you brush. I'm finding different types of brushes like the ones of the bare wire help a lot more. So you can section out in any way you'd like. Uh, you can do small sections, you can do large sections, you can just do the whole thing and section out between that. Just remember, eventually you're going to have to split it up and you're going to have to look for any strands that are missed. So do as you will as much as you want. So here I am showing different examples. You use small, uh, split, or a large split. And it does help to definitely have something under you so you're not ruining pants and you're not ruining your bedding. So have something under it to brush it over as well. Sometimes a table would work or a type of mat. Anything of that format that isn't fabric that won't get torn up will help you in this process of brushing. And I found while you brush with this particular uh, comb that I have is if you use the front just like that in that motion it helps a lot more than going straight and it will be a lot less strain on your hands and your arms because this can be very tiring after a while. So brushing it in that format can help a lot with um, <laughs> having less pain essentially in the end of this. So yeah. Be sure to clean your brush while you're brushing, have a bag with you, and if you do have anything that needs to be covered up in your bedroom or workspace, definitely invest in covering that space up because a lot of little follicles will fly around. So be mindful of that, have all your scraps bagged. Um, there is going to be a lot to come off of, but it's worth it in the end with the results that you get with each tail. And you can always reuse the fluff for stuffing of any sorts or any other crafts you could use. Um, any strands or extra fluff so you don't always have to throw it out it's not always a waste you can always upcycle it but I am warning you it's very messy it will fly around and you need to clean your brush as well my very final and last tip I can give you while you are making your tail is to eventually section it out in very small clumps as possible. It's tedious, but this is how I've learned the best to make the best results of a tail. You really, really want to brush it until it's all the way to the root. Kind of like brushing your own hair or, uh, I don't know, another animal's hair, I guess you could use an example, because there will be some yarns and some colors, because each color acts different and each brand acts different. Whereas the black came out super fluffy, didn't have to worry about any strands. The gray had some strands, but those are easy, easy, easy fix. You just brush it out or you can trim it out, just the strand. 
those are little weaves that just didn't get brushed out. So definitely split up each of your sections, whether you start off with a big section or a little section, it doesn't matter, this will happen regardless. So if you want the best results possible for your tail, you need to split up your sections. And I will show you in a moment here how that can look. So here's my last little tidbit with the uh, tail making. Here I am splitting up the strands and showing you that there are some completely missed and the roots are not brushed off. It's important to brush every little bit you can with these tails because it will fluff that to the max if you're looking for a fluffy look. Even with the short furred tails, I would really, 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 really make a recommend flush brushing sorry brushing it all out till the ends and your roots it will give you the best results it takes a lot of time it can be tedious it takes me about a week to make them but it's so worth it in the end this is your end result that you should get and sometimes you would need to refluff it but this is definitely 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 what it should look like as long as you weave it as I try to show you as best as possible. And this is the end knot and as you can see that entire dark colored core is completely covered by all of the intertwined yarn strands. And again they shed just like a normal animal's tail would shed and they look like an animal tail but guess what guys they are made of yarn and that is the best part and definitely keep this brush around because it is the best for re-grooming them refluffing them getting out any knots that you possibly would need to get out i have not yet had a knot in my tail yet but as the um the issue may acquire sometime in the day it i have a brush so you know it's always good to have one. The longer you make them, the more wiggly they become, and I just love how they look. It's just the most beautiful thing ever, and I'm obsessed with them, hence why I make them now for a living. So there you have it, guys. Look how gorgeous she is. Oh, and up close with detail and all the colors, it's amazing. Now I will definitely give you a little insight about my garters because I know eventually I'm going to have to make a video on them but again they're all made out of fake leather and there's studs and different clips and everything you can put with them. I don't make mine adjustable I make them to the sizing of the tail just to make things simpler and the technique I use to put them on is a lot easier as well. What I do is I take the bottom and the top and I slip it right on there. That's literally all you need to do. All you need to do whenever I make my garters is slip them right on. You clip it to either the um, the lobster claw or you can cl clip it to the split ring and it'll work just fine. And then you just adjust it. You just slide it down and adjust it. there she is the little beauty and that's how you make the tails that I make I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I really really hope this helped you guys a lot on some techniques you can use to make your own for any conventions or just playwear thank you guys so much please like and subscribe I love you guys have a wonderful wonderful day